Welcome back, everyone. Today we are concluding the command of Christ, honor your parents. Gabe, do you want to read the verse for us where we get our command from? So it comes from Matthew chapter 15, verse 4, which says, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Gabe, one of the challenges, as we've talked about in the past, but we're going to touch on again now, is with honoring your parents, is that there may be situations where our parents are difficult to work with or there may be challenges in the relations between the children and the parents and vice versa what do we do how do we respond and i think we have some really good examples in scripture of people who honored their parents even when they face challenges in doing so. And one in particular that I want to touch on is the life of David. David, um, well, if we back up a little bit, um, the king of Israel, uh, the very first king of Israel, who was anointed king, was King Saul. King Saul, um, he started out to some degree, I think, fulfilling, honoring God's wishes, listening to God, but then slowly started giving in to the fear of man, um, started taking things into his own hands, and started reaping the consequences of that. Well, part of the consequence of that was of, of not listening to the Lord and of not following um, God's word and God's directives is that God was actually taking the kingship out of Saul's hands and placing it into David's hands. Well, what ended up happening was because of all the conflict Saul was having in his really submitting submitting to the Lord and honoring the Lord and obeying God um, and the fear of man that he was struggling with, when David came on the scene, he was anointed by Samuel to become king. Literally, Saul basically tried to take his life. I mean, he sought to kill him. I mean, there was so much turmoil and so much struggle and so many problems in Saul's life. Um, and a lot of it was, I think, for him, Gabe, it was a failure for him to, to submit himself to the Lord. So therefore, there was this, he was just very, very troubled. We see in Scripture, he was just extremely troubled. And and then, because of this very troubled life that Saul was living, he began to take out his anger. He began to take out his anxiety, his fear on David, even to the point of wanting to kill him. But what do we see over and over and over again? David's response. Um, it was one of honor. It was one of humility. It was one of respect. He even at one point, I want to forget the story, when Saul was pursuing David, David had hid in a cave. Him and his men had hid in a cave. Saul was pursuing him, didn't know that he was hiding in that particular cave. Saul comes up, goes into the cave, lays down to get some rest. They come out, and this was David's opportunity to kill Saul. But instead of killing him, he actually cuts a part of Saul's garment off and then waits until he awakes. And then shows Saul essentially, look, I had the opportunity to kill you, but because you are the Lord's anointed, but because God has placed you as king, but because um, you are appointed by God, I didn't take your life, you know, in, in many ways. And so it's just amazing how much we can learn from the life of David and that he still honored his father-in-law even when his father-in-law was jealous and wanted to take his life. Yeah, because that, that's right, because obviously Saul was married to, I mean, David rather, was married to Saul's daughter, that's Michael. That's right, yes. So Saul was the father-in-law. You know, he, right. was, he, was, he was one of the in-laws, right? Yeah. And just how he chose to still honor his father-in-law mm -hmm. and not touch the Lord's anointed. You know, even in spite of all the things that Saul did, David still chose to walk in a way of honor. It's amazing. It's amazing. And another story in Scripture, now this is on a little bit of a different note, but where we see really the blessing of the Lord. Now this is kind of contrasting it, where we see the blessing of the Lord 
on someone honoring their mother-in-law would be Ruth. Ruth, um, if we remember the story of Ruth, Ruth's husband was the son of Naomi. Um, and you can read about this in the book of Ruth. But Ruth's husband ended up dying and Naomi ended up going back to the land that she came from. Now, Ruth was a Moabitess. So just even the upbringing, the culture that R Ruth had grown up in wasn't a God-fearing, um, you know, God was not, Jehovah was not their God. Um, let's just put it that way. And, but we see the humility of Ruth and, and where we get that classic scripture where Ruth tells Naomi as Naomi's returning back to her land, Ruth has just lost her husband. And Naomi says, Ruth, go back to your land. You're young. You can get another husband. You can still live a life. But what does she, she say? She refuses. And instead she says, I'm going to go with you. Your God is going to be my God. Your people is going to be my people. Where you go, I'm going. And basically, there will I be buried. You know? And then we see, though, the blessing. Because part of our command, Gabe, is honoring your parents comes with blessing. We see her blessed by she ends up marrying Boaz, which if you follow the lineage all the way down and through, Jesus Christ actually comes through the lineage. So just of the, the humility and the meekness and also the, the honor that Ruth showed to her mother-in-law, the Lord ended up rewarding her and blessing her for that. Which that's so powerful because I think it's so significant to see. And I believe that part of the reason that God blessed actually David so much was because of his willingness to honor Saul. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was a part of it. There were different aspects, but I think that was a part of it. So I think both David and Naomi, um, I mean, both Ni both David and Ruth, rather, reaped benefit from their w and blessing mm -hmm. from their willingness to honor their in-laws. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's significant to see is just on a real practical level of honor of because, you know, we talked about in the first episode, it's it's become very acceptable in our culture to dishonor parents, to violate this command. But and also in our culture, it's very common for people to speak ill of and dishonor their in-laws as well. Yes. And so I think when we look at this command to honor our father and mother, it should be a reminder to us of just the importance of speaking well of mm -hmm. our parents, speaking well of our in-laws, honoring them when we're talking to them, but also when we're talking to other people about them. And I think there's a real blessing that can come as a result of that. I think you're exactly right. And I think another point to add here that we should talk about is how, you know, we're talking about in many ways, how do we honor parents or parents in law uh, that are that are difficult to deal with or that there's just challenges between the two. And, and Gabe, here's a just a few couple things quickly that I think we can practically do in honoring those that 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 are difficult to work with number one i think on the top of the list would be by forgiving them mm -hmm. number two would be loving them number three would be respecting them and really what this boils down to gabe is we can still honor them by living as Jesus would live to them by treating them as Jesus would treat them and you know what that is honor no we might not disagree especially if they're they're living in sin or 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 doing things that are wrong we don't agree with that and we don't necessarily go with that but still we can honor them we can respect them as the parents in our life as the god-given position that that god has given them but I think the most effective way in honoring them in, in a situation like that, when the, where, where, you know, they're either difficult to work with or whatever the, 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 the challenge might be, one of the clearest ways we know we can honor them is by loving them and treating them the way that Jesus would. And I think one of the biggest things that hinders us from doing that, I think one of the biggest things that hinders us actually from honoring our parents is if we harbor and hold on to bitterness 
towards them. You know, because God wants there to be this close relationship between children and parents, I think he works overtime to try to bring a wedge of bitterness between where, and I, I've worked, as I mentioned, a lot with young people, and I would say one of the number one things that young people are dealing with that are holding them back in their walk with God is harboring and holding on to bitterness. And then those young people become older people, and sometimes they still haven't let go of that bitterness and just the damage that it has on their life. And then I think even also seeing parents that, that, are, that because the young people holding on to bitterness, and specifically hold young people holding on to bitterness towards their parents, and then also parents actually having bitterness towards their children and and what I mean by that is where the parent feels like wow you know I invested so much in this child and I gave so much of my life for this child and now they've walked away from God Um, and they get bitter and they get angry at the child for for um, for for what they've done and so no matter what whether you're a parent or a child you need to walk in forgiveness right God calls Mm -hmm. us to forgive Um, I think of even how in you know Ephesians 5 and 6 it talks about the relationship between husbands and wives and fathers and children it gets into all those different relationships but prior to that, at the end of Ephesians chapter 4, it says, Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And I really think, Nate, if we really want to honor our parents, we need to walk in forgiveness towards them. And I think if we harbor, well, I know, if we harbor and hold on to bitterness, not only is it going to damage our relationship between us and our parents, but it's actually going to come between us and God as well. Scripture talks about in Hebrews that a root of bitterness can spring up in our lives and trouble us and defile those around us. Mm-hmm. Um, and just the, 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 the exponential damage that, that can cause. I think of maybe a, a more extreme example of this. Um, I was doing some ministry in prison, and I remember I was helping um, do a, 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 a retreat for um, a group of men in a prison and um, just really encouraging them to deal with, allow the Lord to deal with heart issues in their life and really pointing them towards the Lord Jesus. And um, I remember we were, uh, we, were, we were there in our small group and um, going around different guys, the guys were sharing kind of where they were at in their walk with God and, or if they had one, they were kind of sharing, if they were saved, they were sharing how they got saved and if they weren't saved and they were, they were um, saying that. And so as we were around, we got to this one man and I remember he just, he looked up, he said, I'm here because I'm lost. And then he just hung his head just so hopeless and, and I and I but, but but my thought when he said that was I'm glad you're here because <laughs> I'm here because I know a savior um and so I thought in my mind it would be great if I could talk to this man at some point um during the uh during just have, have a one-on-one conversation with him and so I kept waiting for that opportunity to talk with him and share the gospel with him and um but it just kept not working out but God was working the timing of it perfectly right towards the end of the week the men would the man would always sit with the group of other men around him but I looked over one time and there wasn't anybody sitting next to him. And so I went and I sat down next to him. And I just said, how are you doing? And he looked over and oh, fine. And um, I asked him just a really simple question. Something like, like, how's the, you know, how? And I asked him how the event had been for him um, that, that week. And he looked at me and he said, it's actually been really hard. And then he began to weep. And it wasn't just like a few tears. It was like, ooh, he began to weep. And other people are looking back. And I was like, uh, do you want to talk? And, and he was like, yeah. And so we got up and we went to the back of the room there and we sat down and Nate would just tear. He was just weeping and weeping as he just began mm-hmm. to share with me how he had had so much moral failure in his life. I mean, his life had just been plagued with moral failure. It was part of the reason he was in prison. He had been in and out, in and out. Now he's 70 plus years old. He's just eaten up with this and he was just weeping and just, just all these things. He said, as we were going through the material that we were covering, he said, he said he thought we must have known what he had done and been speaking directly to him. Um, and of course, we had, didn't know what he had done. But the Holy Spirit knew what he had done and was speaking directly to him and was convicting his heart. And, and so he's sharing these things of all this moral failure in his life and all these things that he struggled with and all these different things. And, 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 and finally, as we, as we talked, he looked and he said, I so badly want to surrender to the Lord, but I can't and I don't know why. Mm. And I thought, boy, I don't either. And so I was like, Lord, now's the time where I need that wisdom you know, from above. Would you show me like, what's, what's the issue here? What's going on? And I didn't know. But I, I could tell that Satan had ground in this guy's life, that they were, obviously the enemy had, had this guy wrapped up in, in bondage. And so I, I, I started asking him, you know, have you had involvement in the occult and some of those other things that can, that can just give a door to the enemy come in and work destruction and havoc? And it turns out right before he'd come into prison, he had started getting involved some in the occult and different things. And so what I encouraged him to do is I encouraged him, I said, confess those things to the Lord claim the blood of Jesus over them and cry out to God for deliverance. And so he bowed his head and, and he was like, Lord, forgive all my sins. And I said, okay, be a little more specific. <laughs> um, what I meant was pray from your heart. Yes. But then he really began to pray from his heart and he just began to confess the things very sincerely, I believe in genuinely the Lord. And then when he finished with that, he stopped. You know what the next thing he was supposed to do? Claim the blood of Jesus over him. 
And he sat there and he struggled and he struggled and he struggled. And he looked up at me, you know, 70 plus year old man, been in and out of prison. He looked up at me and he said, this is so hard. The enemy was losing his grip. That's right. And finally, he said, I claim the blood of Jesus over it. And I don't think I will ever forget the next words that came out of his mouth. He said, I claim the blood of Jesus over it. I forgive my dad. Whoa. And I thought, whoa, I hadn't even thought of talking to him about bitterness and forgiveness. But praise God, the Holy Spirit, who is the wonderful counselor, had. And when he said, I claim the blood of Jesus over it, he said, I forgive my dad. And you know, Nate, I think that he thought the stronghold in his life was moral impurity. But I have to wonder if I think the real stronghold in his life was bitterness towards his mm -hmm. dad. And isn't it incredible to think if he carried this bitterness, how that probably spiraled his life in a, in, in a mm -hmm. very negative direction. All the other things he ended up bound up in, um, I think in part as a result of that. And so I just think this point of walking of children, forgiving and releasing parents, and I just mm -hmm. really encourage our listeners, if, maybe maybe there's um, some offenses that you've had, and maybe you're, you're grown and have your own family, but there's still this, 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 these offenses that you have in your heart, these grievances, these things that need to be forgiven and released, or maybe you're a young person listening to this, and, 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 and there's a bitterness that you have towards your parents, or um, I, I just want to encourage you, don't harbor it, don't hold on to it, stop this episode right now. Get on your knees before the Lord mm -hmm. and pray and forgive and release mm -hmm. them to the Lord. You know what the scripture says, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. And just like God for Christ's sake has forgiven us, he wants us to forgive those that have hurt us. And just forgive that person, release them to the Lord, and then ask God to bless them and to work in their life. And, and I really believe that that is going to be a key step towards walking in honor towards your parents. Amen. Thank you for sharing that true story. And um, it's amazing how the area of bitterness touched on so many different areas um, in his life. And it's amazing. I It'd be interesting, Gabe, to touch base again with him now mm -hmm. and to see where his life is and how much freedom, not just in the area of bitterness towards his dad he has, but in so many other areas. Because it just seems that when we deal with the root of bitterness it starts to heal up other areas such as mm -hmm. honored respect between children and parents and so as we conclude this episode we want to touch on one last thing and i think it's no coincidence gabe that mm -hmm. the very last book in the old testament the very some of the very last verses in the old testament has to deal with this issue of child and parent relationships and i'm going to read it it's it's malachi chapter 4 starting in verse 5 it says behold i will send you elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the lord and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to their children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest i come and smite the earth with a curse gabe i believe that when relationships between children and parents begin to heal a nation begins to heal and god begins to become lord and king of that nation so for our listeners we truly hope that this uh, series of four episodes on the command honor your parents has been encouraging to you maybe it's convicted you maybe you see areas that you need to um, go back and make right maybe there's some areas that you need to ask the lord to strengthen you and give you boldness and courage to forgive um, maybe there's just areas that you didn't really even realize the blessing that is connected with fulfilling and walking out and living this and embracing this command. Remember, it's Christ who does it through us, but we need to cooperate. We need to surrender. We need to yield. We need to begin to gain the heart and the mind of Christ on this so that he can begin that work in us. And who knows if we are dealing with authorities or even parents that are difficult to deal with if god begins to do the work in us he may that may be the very tool that reaches them so we hope this has been a blessing and encouragement to you and we hope that you join us on our next episode god bless you